lovely thanks okay so welcome um i'm alison watts from the southern coast postgraduate association uh we're very happy to be working with liz and hosting a series of financial well-being workshops this year okay and so today's uh quite uh going to be fascinating for me too because i too have a hex debt so it's a, talking about everything you need to know about your hex and help debt uh so yeah over to you liz thank you lovely thanks Alison. thanks for the introduction uh so yes today we're going to be talking around we won't be getting into every single fine detail but we're going to really look at some of the key three um three okay. or questions That's around really hex help um zishan could i just ask if you turn off your um mic just as we, yeah perfect just so we don't have the background noise and Alison will do the same oh, yeah. and when we're talking we'll slip between yeah all good thank you um so yeah just a big welcome um obviously to yourself Zishan and those who are listening back to this recording I know they become a, a really great resource for everybody I like to just acknowledge all of the incredible work that you're all doing um you're here as part of the postgraduates um association so uh, I know that you're all doing a lot of different research and coursework studies in a variety of fields. And although what we're bringing, what I'm presenting and I will do throughout the year is really um, focused around finances, I always like to remind everybody about all of the amazing skills and experiences that you already have and that you can bring and use a lot of those to helping you with your financial life. So yeah, just really amazing stuff that everybody's doing at the moment. I'll also, just before we begin, want to do my acknowledgement of country. So I'd like to acknowledge um, the traditional custodians on the various lands on which we are all connecting from today for this online webinar. I pay my respects um, to elders past and present and recognise and celebrate their connection and role in caring for country over thousands of years. May their wisdom and strength be with us today. Thank you. Uh, so just a little quick bit about myself. Um, so I, uh, I'm a CPA, so I have a, a, an accounting um, finance background and I have my connection with um, Southern Cross University is that I was a, a unit assessor for over five years teaching in the business school area in accounting, um, undergrads and master's students who are studying professional accounting and counting units. Um, and I love the university. I've actually moved on and I'm now teaching at Swinburne, which is a Melbourne-based university, but I still um, consult to the SCPA in my capacity as somebody who can provide financial education and literacy information. And that's really what I'm here to do is to really hope to, I know that you're all very busy in your fields of study, um, but finances can be quite a stressful topic. And what I'd like to be able to do is to provide information that can help you to make decisions to alleviate some of that stress around your finances so that you can then focus on your studies and, and the, you know, the passions that you have um, and, and your families and, and your life. So that's really my aim. So I kind of draw upon, um, I've got about 10, 12 years worth of experience in finance. Um, which was really around management accounting, helping businesses to manage their finances and make decisions about their finances. And then I sort of couple that together with my teaching experience as well. So, um, uh, and what I do like to add as well is that I am a qualified financial counsellor as well. So I do also provide those services for helping people work through um, any financial difficulties that they're facing um, and also advocacy work as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about the end, at the end, about some of the, the services that you can also um, utilise in terms of engaging me one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll get to that at the end. Um, so today we're talking about HEX, HEX help. Um, and yes, there's a lot of different terms used for it and it can be a bit confusing about what is it. Um, and we'll get to that. But before we begin, um, as we were preparing for these um, webinars last week, um, Alison brought it to my attention that um, there is actually, and, and some of you may already be aware of this, um, but there's actually um, a Senate inquiry going on regarding um, the way in which the debts, the HEX debts are being indexed um, and also the minimum repayment threshold in terms of your income when you begin to, to pay off your HEX debt. Um, so they're looking into that. And Craig, who's um, um, who works for the SCPA, um, actually wrote a submission to that Senate inquiry and he's down in Sydney this week 
um, and he'll be presenting to them. So really advocating for you as students. Um, as we've seen historically, the indexation has been quite low, so around the one to 2%. But as we've seen last year, it's coming up to four. And with inflation and CPI, because it gets indexed by CPI each year, that we're going to be seeing those loans really increase. So um, it'll be really great to, to keep um, across what he gets up to this week and what the outcome of that Senate inquiry is. And we'll be sure to communicate what those outcomes are with you through the normal channels, through the SCPA as well. Um, but yeah, keep, it, keep an ear out. Um, I'll be really keen to hear. But yeah, really wonderful work that, that Craig's been doing there for advocacy for, the, for students. Um, so with that in mind, um, what I will do today is really present what the current state is. So we've you know, got that in our mind that in bubbling in the background, there are people who are trying to, you know, challenge the way things are and look at whether they can change it. But what I'll present to you is how it currently is. Um, so you've got, you know, up to date information and at least the information that might be able to help you to, to make some decisions about what you want to do um, with your hex debt. So I've got really three key questions that students most commonly will ask around HEX, and I know this won't answer everybody's questions. Um, so Zeeshan, we had a little bit of a chat before this webinar, and I'll make sure that I answer off your questions as you're here today. But if you're listening back to this and have additional questions, please get in contact with um, the SCPA through, um, through Alison, and she can connect you with myself and we can talk through some of your personal um, questions that you might have. So what we're going to cover off today is uh, firstly, how much HEX do I pay back? So working out, you know, how that actually works. Um, should I pay it early? So a lot of students will ask, like other debts that they may have, you know, where does HEX fall in your priority list and should I be repaying it early? Um, and then how does HEX, you know, impact some of your other financial life? So how does it impact um, specifically what I'm looking at here is your borrowing power. So I know a lot of people are interested in, you know, purchasing a, a, a home. How does HEX, having that HEX debt impact? So these kind of three, three key um, questions, I'll provide you with some information, hopefully that then can help you to then make an informed decision for yourselves um, about, you know, what works best for you, um, which I didn't say right up front as well. I wanted to make sure that this presentation today is really for educational purposes only. So I'm not a financial advisor. Please, can you cannot take what I, um, I'm telling you um, as financial advice. If you do need that specific advice, I would be encouraging you to see um, an accountant or a, a financial advisor. We can talk through um, things together one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but again, it's not financial advice. So, um, so just first off is, you know, how much HEX do, do you need to pay? Um, and this obviously changes each year, so we're really important to, to keep across this. And, and the ATO is really where you're going to find a lot of your information and it was a really good resource for keeping across what is the current information. And they are getting better. So the ATO, historically, the language and how it's been presented has often been hard to get your head around, but they have improved that. So hopefully navigating through that information is going to be um, easier. Um, but essentially what you'll do, so um, I know um, Zeeshan, who's at the beginning, commencing study, uh, hasn't perhaps um, accrued or, or, or got a hex debt yet, and you're actually trying to work out whether you should be paying it up front or not. Um, and some of that I might need to go into detail offline in terms of sort of the financial modelling of that, because what I'm really, I, I guess most students, are probably, uh, they could be in your situation or they could be part way through and they're just wanting to understand. So what you'll do is you'll accrue that debt as you're studying. So it will increase as you obviously you study each unit. Um, you won't be paying it through your own cash or your own income. It will just be accruing as, as a debt. Um, so at the end of your studies, you'll have a total amount, uh, which was the total cost of your studies. And that will be the debt that you owe, which we call HEX HELP. It's sometimes called HEX, sometimes called HELP. It's also now being put into a larger category that's called STSL, student loans. So we've got a whole lot of different terms for those, but essentially you just need to be aware that your, your, your HEX debt is the debt for which you um, accrued for the studies, um, which you've, you've done, which you haven't paid anything. 
um, and the government will hold that, so the ATO will have all of that information. And what happens is that once you start earning um, over a particular threshold, then you are required um, to make compulsory repayments. So it will then automatically come off your pay. So wherever you're working, um, when you begin or commence work with an employer, when you're filling out your declaration form, there you are required by law to, to note that you do have a hex debt um, and that they then uh, connect that hex debt up with your, um, your ATO file. And when you're earning money, your employer um, will be looking up Firstly, you know, that they, they know how much tax they need to withhold from you, um, but then they also need to know how much um, of your HEX repayments that they need to withhold from you as well. So the current um, threshold that we're looking at here, which is sort of halfway on your um, on this slide. So once you start earning over $48,361, that's the threshold amount for the 22-23 years, the year we're currently in. So if you're earning over that amount, you will start to have compulsory repayments coming out of your income. Um, so this is also speaking to some of that Senate inquiry that's going on. So one component of that inquiry is looking to challenge that threshold amount and is actually requesting that that is increased. So they're wanting to see if they can um, have that go up to around $65,000 is going to be the, the threshold that they're really trying to push for. But just so you've got yeah a bit of that information in the background. But currently, as it stands, um, once you start earning over that $48,361, you will start seeing um, those repayments come out. Alison, did you have a question? Uh, just um, yeah. alerting you to uh, Zishan's comment in the chat. Okay, um, yes about advising his payroll about his hex debt? Yes, great question. So I would check with them. Um, you may not. Uh, so if you had started working and you didn't have a hex debt, you wouldn't have filled that out in your declaration form. So important now that you are, when you commence your studies and if it is that you choose to have a hex debt, absolutely you'll need to let them know. And that would just be a simple um, email to whoever your payroll officer is or your HR representative, just to let them know that you do have a hex debt. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so you'll need to let them know. Fabulous. Um, good. So yeah, so that's essentially how it works. So as soon as you start earning over that threshold, you have the compulsory payments that automatically will be um, taken out. Um, you can also make voluntary um, repayments as well. So you have the option of if you are earning enough and you want to contribute more to pay off that debt, you can. Um, the decision around that uh, really comes down to your own financial situation, which I'm going to touch upon in just in our next um, slides. Um, but I just wanted to cover off here. So in terms of if you're wanting to work out and understand how much those um, voluntary repayments are going to be, it's all based on um, percentages. So as you start to earn more money, you will then be repaying more as well, as you can see here. So I just grabbed this from the ATOs, actually studyassist.gov um, website. So the link's down the bottom there, which outlines all of the different thresholds. So that beginning commencing threshold of 48,361. So once you start earning over that, um, you're going to start paying back 1%. So that's your repayment rate is 1%. And then you can see that this will, that and this isn't the complete table, depending on what your income level is, um, you, you will be paying back more. And I guess the idea, the thinking behind it was that you have the capacity to pay back more as you're earning more. Um, that was their uh, approach. So right or wrong, that's that's how it was set up. So that this is sort of the, the current information there. Um, so if you wanted to check um, Zishan as well, if you contacted your HR and let them know and you wanted to check when you get your pay slip, um, you can just to make sure that your employer is calculating it correctly. Obviously, they are under duty to make sure that they do do it correctly. But here you've got some of those percentages which will allow you to do that as well. So you can double check. So you're not then at the end of the tax year owing more um, hex um, of, of those um, compulsory contributions. Uh, so just a little bit of an example here, just, you know, practicalities um, can be helpful. So just an example of what a payslip might look like. So this was just, um, so not, not your situation here, but this is just a, you know, someone's doing casual work while they're studying. 
um, where they'll see. So now you can see part way down how it has tax at number two. So you have the normal amount of withholding tax that we um, we we are withheld so that we can keep up with our tax obligations. And then we've got that STSL component. So that is the, that greater category for which HEX is part of. Um, it also picks up loans, obviously, for other modes of study as well. So that's your STSL, if you see that in your um, payslip, and then it would have an amount there as well. And you should have your superannuation. And yes, yeah, so that just kind of gives you a bit of an example of what you might see as well. Um, down the bottom, I've just included um, the tax table. So how it's worked out. So like your um, income tax, there's tax tables available through the ATO that will tell you exactly depending on the, the um, income that you've earned, how much tax should be withheld. This is a, a table for showing you, depending on how much you're earning, how much of that hex debt needs to be repaid. So again, if, you, if you're somebody who wants to make sure that it, double check it, make sure that, that your employer is calculating it correctly, um, that's all the um, resources that you'll need to do that. Okay, so now going, so I guess, you know, continuing on with that, that information. So we know that there's the voluntary component that is all about the thresholds um, of which we're earning. There is also the, the um, voluntary amounts and the uh, often a question uh, is asked around, you know, should you pay off your um, hex debt early? And um, Zeeshan, I know this is something, so you've, you're even thinking about even before you accumulate a hex debt, should I have one at all? Um, so that's also a question that you'll need to ask and probably look at, you'll need to look at your complete financial situation to be able to answer that. But some of the things that you would want to consider, um, for example, it's really thinking about, so if you have the cash flow or the capital to pay for your um, studies up front, it's looking at well, what would be the alternatives that I could use that cash flow or capital for, and would that give me a greater return than what I'm um, achieving with uh, putting it towards my studies? So, to give you a little bit more information, maybe make that a little bit more clear. So, if you were able, if you say had um, other debts, other high interest consumer debts that had a higher interest rate. So as we were sharing at the beginning regarding the Senate inquiry, we know that HEX doesn't have interest, but it is indexed. So it does um, get adjusted through CPI. So it does, you'll see it if you are, if you were working below the threshold, your HEX debt will get bigger because you're not paying it off and it's getting indexed, if that makes sense. Um, so it's, it's, but what you could do is compare that rate to the rate that you have to pay back in interest. So you would compare the CPI percentage to the percentage that you might be paying the cost of any other loans or credit that you might have. So as we shared for over the last couple of years, it's only been one or 2%. So, um, and most recently, 4%. So if you are if you have a loan, for example, if you have a home loan or a credit card, so credit cards could be 10%. So it would make more sense for you to channel that extra cash flow or capital towards paying off something that has a higher interest rate that's going to be higher than the current CPI of your HEX debt. Does that make sense? So if you even if you have a home loan that's maybe 5%, and your hex debt is, is increasing by um, maybe the CPI is four this year, it might be six or seven next year. It's just keeping an eye to those. It's an equivalent to like an interest rate. Um, so you can then make a decision about that. Uh, so most research you'll find in the market will show you that your hex debt in terms of priorities. So we've, um, if, you, if you're looking at the priorities in terms of which ones you should be paying off first to improve your financial situation, uh, from a pure, pure financial benefit, you would always pay off the highest interest rate loan first and your hex debt is likely to be the lowest of those. So it depends on what else you have going on in terms of where you want to channel that money. Um, if you don't have any debt, you've paid off your home, um, even in that situation, you would still be making that a consideration around, you know, that extra cash flow or capital 
would it be better off putting it somewhere where I'm getting a return that's higher than the 4%? You might put it somewhere and then just let your hex debt get paid off bit by bit as you're working. Um, so that's another thing to think through. Alison, did you have a question there? Oh, just um, is, you know, on the previous slide there of um, percentages, oh, this maybe one. it was even the previous one. one. So does it go any higher than 5.5 5 if if people are earning more than? Yes, it does. Yes, so and I haven't, I haven't got it going up. It does keep going up. It does It does have an upper limit. I'm, I'm going to say I don't think it's more than 10. Um, I haven't got the um, rates just there, but it does go up and up. Okay. Um, but, yeah. and, but not infinitely. So yeah, just have a check yeah. of that. So okay. um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's worth thinking through. Uh, so yeah, so it depends on, so it's making that individual um, consideration about your right though, because you're thinking about which is the repayment rate that's relevant to me as well. So how much am I repaying? How much is it being indexed each year? Um, and what else could I be doing with that cash flow or capital? And would it be giving me a greater return? So essentially, that's what you'll be what you'll be thinking through. Um, sorry, and I've got some messages here from Zishan here. Um, oh yes, okay. So the um, the source of this because these percent of this slide here is that what you're asking for there? So I can probably copy that. Copy that link. Well, maybe not. Yes, you just on sorry that's so I've got the link here embedded I just can't seem to hyperlink it from here um... yeah or we can I can definitely send it on what we can do is send these slides sure yeah well, so maybe that's it's easier if that would help and then you could because I have included a couple of links there as well yeah. um, which would be much easier to do directly from the slides so yeah we'll do that but yeah good um, I'm sure that will be helpful for others too thanks Sishan. Um okay great and, and so you're, you're asking so now I can see all the other questions <laughs> that's great um okay so so yes yeah, so that's so I guess that's what I so you can it, it's it's to be aware that you can make additional voluntary contributions if you would like to uh, but it's really about thinking through what else you could be using that money for and would it be uh, more beneficial to your financial situation um, in addition to that in addition to thinking through what the returns are so in in some cases if it's that you're perhaps wanting to to use that capital to say purchase something else like uh, that would be an investment vehicle like shares or property or something that would have a potential return. If that return is higher than the index, then that would make sense that you'd be getting more benefit out of channeling it and using that money that way. Um, but again, as I was saying, that if you're then comparing it to other debt facilities, that you'd be wanting to pay off the debt that has the highest interest rates first, and you usually list them um, and then prioritise them that way. And your hex debt is has historically been the lowest of those, but as we're seeing now with the CPI increasing, that it's worth then looking and comparing to make sure that um, it is it is still the lowest. But alongside that, it's also it's a different type of debt. So um, important to also understand that it's it's a debt unlike others that you are to continue to repay all based on the level of income that you're earning but you could be in a scenario where you get to the end of your life and you still have hex debt and students often want to understand what happens to that does it carry over to their children or their family and that isn't the case so your hex debt you know, if it is that you, you pass away, you'll pay your repayments up until that point, but then the, the, the debt, you know, almost passes with you. So that's another thing to, to consider as well. It's, it's a, bit, a bit different to other types of debt. Um, so, yeah, really important to kind of look at your overarching, your whole financial situation um, and to, to consider if you're going to make um, voluntary contributions or not. Um, so Zishan, does that help 
um, answer any of your questions so far or change any of your thinking around it um, in terms of, you know, the situation you're trying to make a decision about whether to, to pay it up front or, um, you know, have the hex debt? What, what are your thoughts so far? But that's okay. And, and, I did and find the um, Liz, I did find that link um, and posted it. Uh, oh, the study that. assist yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, great. Lovely. Very useful. Yes, good. Okay. Um, and did it show you what was the highest rate? If you click on it. Ten percent. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Good. Um, so that's your, so that's not your indexing percentage, just so we're really clear. I know there's a lot of figures being discussed and thrown around here. That's the percentage that you need to repay. So the indexing is consistent to everybody. So your debt will be indexed in total, independent of how much you earn. So everybody's will be indexed each year by the same amount, by that CPI amount but it will be the amount for which you need to your, your the compulsory repayment, the amount that you have to pay back um, changes depending on how much you earn. So the more you earn, the higher percent of it that you need to repay. Yeah. So just make sure we're really clear on that. Um, so, uh, so then just a little bit of a, a question here. So, um, you know, really high level. So which debt would you pay off first? So if you've got a credit card debt or you've got a hex debt, um, which debt would you would you pay off first? If you've got extra cash going towards, available to go towards those things? Well, pay the credit card debt because it's a higher, higher interest, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it's costing you more. So the, the sooner you get rid of that higher cost consumer debt, um, and we'll certainly go into that in more detail too when we, we do, in May, we have our um, financial wellbeing three-part series webinar and we do go into some of those priorities around, you know, improving your financial situation. But you're absolutely right. So anything that's got the highest interest rate and credit cards have got to be up there. Um, we want to get rid of those. And um, I know in our last webinar, we talked about using cash instead and and, and really keeping control of what we're spending. So absolutely. So if you're just talking pure finances um, uh, and also I'd say the emotional strain of having a credit card debt um, mm -hmm. is much more weighty than having a hex debt. So I always like to speak to the financial wellbeing side, but also the mental health side, which we all know is, is um, so important and particularly heavy around finances. So yeah, eliminating any credit card debt or consumer debt, car loans, um, any of those wallet wizard, whatever those things are, they're trying to get everyone to sign up for getting, making sure you can channel any um, spare cash flow or capital towards eliminating those improves your financial situation, but also your mental health around your finances. So having that hex debt is, is a lot less of a stress um, compared to your those other debts that we, we've been talking about. Uh, okay, so our last question. So I uh, and I'll come to um, other questions to um, Zeeshan at the end if there are any. Uh, but one of the other most common questions that people uh, do ask, but often also forget about, is that um, it's it, it's it's important to be aware of that hex does also have an impact on your borrowing power. So anything for which you have to repay or have a, um, a consistent um, outflow of cash um, is going to be considered when you're making an application for a home loan because a lender wants to look at, okay, what are all of the obligations that this person has to meet um, before also paying off a mortgage because it helps them to understand what is their repayment um, capacity and ability to maintain that. So as we've um, understood in, in the earlier slides, we got, there's, it's a compulsory repayment once we start earning over a certain amount. So lenders will take that into consideration. So it's not that you would just tell them, okay, I'm earning $75,000. 
I'm earning $75,000, but I also have a hex debt. So they need to work out what that, that cash outflow impact is. So they would work out what the net impact is. Um, and also you would as well to make sure that if you are taking on um, a debt like a home, which is a, which can be a really um, positive financial move, not only psychologically, but uh, financially as well, because um, houses do, you know, the, the, the rate of return and, um, and also the, the longer term impacts of owning a home in retirement and things like that. Um, but really important that you're making sure that when you make those decisions about how much to borrow, that you feel comfortable that you're going to be able to keep up with the repayments too. So it's making sure that you're um, also incorporating the HEX repayments into your cash flow. So you've got a certain amount of income coming in, but you know that your HEX is going out, you know that you've got taxes going out, you know that you've got all your additional things and that's what you'll need to include. Um, so I just included like really, really high level rough. And this was um, just to give you an indication of, I guess it's another another piece of the puzzle, not to, you know, bombard you with information that's, that's you know, hard to think about. But it's just to be, be aware of that it does impact. So here we're looking at without HEX, it's, it's almost a $50,000 kind of difference in terms of borrowing power at that level. So a really high level example, um, looking at how much you can borrow. So if you didn't have that hex debt, you could borrow a little bit more because you would be in a position to channel that extra income towards your mortgage as opposed to paying off your hex. And that's essentially what's going on there over the long, over the length of a lifetime of a loan. Um, so just another consideration. Um, but for some people, it may be that um, it's about priorities too. So it may be that you... Uh, want to ensure that you can have that home that you purchase, um, but you do have a hex debt. So it just means that you're going to borrow slightly less. Um, and as opposed to trying to pay off your hex first, that might take some time. And then the position that you would be in to borrow, um, it might kind of put you a bit behind in terms of the market as well. Um, but yeah, so it's just worth thinking about. And I don't know if that kind of adds to your situation as well, um, Zeeshan, again, not knowing the complete financial situation. And, and, and this is not the forum um, to be going into, into your personal finances, but it's just another thing to be considering. So depending on your situation, um, if it is that you already have a home loan and you've, um, you've got that sorted out and you've got your repayments, you would just be aware that if you did take on a hex debt, your current level of income would reduce because some of it would be now being channeled towards that hex debt. And you can work out what that amount is. And it may be a couple of thousand dollars or a hundred dollars, depending on how much you're earning, you need to work out what that is because then that reduces your income that you used to have available to be channeling towards um, you know, your mortgage and your home and all of, and your lifestyle and all of those things. So just so you're informed as well, what is the net impact going to be for me? Um, so you might be that you have the upfront capital and you think, should I just pay for, and it might be that you can cash flow it as well. And this would be a little bit of modeling. So we'd be looking at, so if you could, um, whilst you're earning, you might currently have excess income. And you might be in a situation where you think, well, could I channel it towards paying off my home loan or do I channel it towards um, paying for my studies? And you can make a decision about which one is going to work for you. And, and it's not, or it doesn't always come down to the finances about which one's better. Psychologically, you might feel like you just want to, you know, not have a hex debt and just pay it off. Um, but financially, at the moment, well, depending on what your home loan rate is, it's probably likely that that home loan rate is going to be higher than the indexation rate for HEX, I would imagine. But keep keep an eye on that. Did I just confuse you or did that help in any way? That's good. That's all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Lovely. So that's, yeah, that's just another thing to be mindful of. Often we don't think about the the fact that it does impact our cash flow, which impacts our borrowing power. So yeah, that's that's um, all good. Um, so they're my three questions. And my last little one here is, um, well, I guess it's just based on what we were saying. So um, why does HEX um, affect my, my borrowing power? 
So A, it either makes me look less reliable or B, the hex repayment reduces my income and therefore my ability to service the loan. So pretty easy answer there, but Alison. <laughs> um yeah it reduces income doesn't it if you're it does. yeah yes yeah yeah and it certainly it doesn't make you look less reliable um that's not that's not the piece it's it's really it's the dollars and cents that a, a lender is looking at that's that's black and white for them they're looking at the figures um and they can see that yes it reduces your income because you're, pay, you're paying off that hex debt so it just means that you've got less serviceability is what they call it in the industry or less cash flow available um to service that loan and make sure you can keep up with the repayments so that's how it really affects your borrowing power something to be aware of lovely uh so i think that's um again i've just I think which is particularly helpful for this topic. I don't always have a lot of resources, but I know that particularly these resources are good to be across um, as we know that things are also changing and each year the indexation changes, the thresholds can change. So if you want to stay up to date with all of the, the most um, uh, up-to-date information, so we've, as we've, you know, Alison's already shared that study assist um, link as well, which is really good. So that can help you work out what your loan repayments are, which will feed into your decision around, do I pay it off early? Do I pay it up front? Um, but also you can use it to check to make sure um, employee, employers are usually pretty good at this, um, but you can do it as even if you wanted to see that first pay run go through and check it. They're always um, there and available to also talk you through it if you want to check anything just to make sure that you're um, you're comfortable that it's all calculated correctly and that you're not going to be out of pocket at the end of the tax year or get fined or whatever it is. So yeah, that's that's um, a really good resource for you to do the calculations and check it off against your pay slip. Um, if you're wanting to check your loan balance, so as you're going, um, everything's through MyGov through the ATO now. So I'm sure you've all got, um, if you haven't got that account set up, so you can go into MyGov um, and you can check out your balance um, using your um, higher education student support number. So you just log in using that and you can check what that balance is. And that will be up to date in terms of that indexation as well. Um, also on the ATO, they have their the repayment calculator. Um, we've also got some, which is another topic which we'll do in a future webinar. Uh, I think coming up, we will do it timely in June, probably early June. We'll run another webinar around tax as well. So really um, helpful for students to know what is it that they can be um, claiming as deductions. I know obviously many of you are studying and working at the same time and how does that work? Um, so I just included that almost as a, you know, getting ready for that that next um, phase of, of our next tax, tax cycle. Um, so we'll go into that in June in more detail as well. But I've just included a um, a, a link there to working out what are the relevant deductions that you can claim, particularly around self-education, which is really relevant to you all as well. Often these things will pop up at the same time when you're on the ATO website. Um, so yeah, so I think those, those are really helpful and we'll make sure that you can follow those links from this um, presentation when it's distributed to everybody at the end. Um, yes, Zishan. Thank you, uh, really nice presentation. Um, just have a quick question. So if my situation, um, my course fee is around $24,000. Um, yep. Like I said, half of that will be paid by my company. So I'll be remaining with the other half, which is gonna be around $12,000. Yeah, and uh, that's give or two take. years. That's across two years, yeah. If two I do years, yeah. do it in two years, it might take longer, depending on <laughs> depending, yeah, how busy I it. am. Yeah, how anyways, you go. The, yeah so about 6000 a year, yeah. Yeah, 6000 a year, 12000 in total. Um, now, the 10%, because I think I fall under that 10% repayment yeah. mark. Yeah. Does that mean it's going to take me 10 years to pay that back? Um, well, so it also year, depends... It depends on that um, indexation threshold that happens. So okay. uh, actually, no, because it's just got it. No, so no, you're right. So you're still going. You're just going to be repaying more. So if it's yeah. indexed higher, yes, you'll be paying yeah. that ten percent. Correct. So it will take you ten years. Yeah. So ten percent yeah. each year. 
um, but it may be what that 10% is, is likely to increase. Increase, okay. Yes, because it will be indexed. Um, no, so th no, because if we think about it, we need, I always need modelling for this. So, so if you imagine, um, I need an Excel spreadsheet, but if you've got, so if you've got 12,000, um, so 1,200 a year, which then brings it down. So even if we made it 10,000 to do it. So if you say your debt was 10,000, that first year you pay $1,000 mm -hmm. and then your debt, your debt balance is 9,000. 9, that yeah. 9,000 would be indexed for the next year. So it would be to CPI. So it might go yeah. up. So it might go up by times 1.0, so it's still 4%. So it would then go up to 9,360. Oh, okay. And so that then you would pay 10% on that. On so, that and what the remaining balance, it always increases yeah. next year. Okay. So in yeah. the end, uh, I won't be paying 12,000. I'll be paying more. a lot more than that. Yes. Yeah, maybe what? Correct. Mm. Yes. The yeah. rough, just rough, how much more do you think? I mean, I can, I, model, I I can actually model. Model, well, I, I can model it for can. you offline. Yeah, yeah. And yep. if you send me, um, if you go My through Alison detail. at the end, if you go through Alison, send Alison an email and then she'll forward it on to me. And okay. yeah, and then I can do a really rough high level. That's a really good question to give you an yep. idea of, yeah, what are the figures um, to understand? Paying, right? Yeah. And I'll just do it over, I'll do it over the, I'll say two and a half years. If mm -hmm. it takes yeah. you two and a half years to complete your study and just split it out that 12,000 over that two and a half sure. years and work out. So at that 10% repayment that, amount. That and I'll be do, really beneficial because that will give me yeah. a rough idea. Gives you know, you a how, what, how, what it may, how it may look like. Yeah. How yeah, it may look yeah. Like. So if it's, if it's like 12,000 compared to 18,000. I might yeah. have to think, should I then, pay it? Yeah. yeah, should I yeah. use that? Yeah, that yeah, that's that's really my bottom end helpful. question. That's your bottom line, yeah. And at the same that's time, right. what I would also just encourage you to think through is if you didn't do that, what would you be doing with the cash? What would you be doing with that extra money? So if that's you've right. got, yeah. so if you say you got the twelve thousand dollars now in capital, and you're thinking, do I have it? Do I keep it um, and just use it to pay my fees as I go? Yeah. Or do I do something else with it? Do I yep. put it on my home loan? And then how much does that yep. save me? Do I put it into an investment? How much could that make me? Yep. So it's it's also, yep. this is where these things are, you know, they're complicated because you want to make right. sure. That's... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so can... yes, on one hand, it's going up and you're going to pay more than $12,000 over that, that yep. 10 years. Um, but what return or what reduction in cost could you potentially also get? Do you have a home loan or other consumer debt? So you don't need to tell me the amounts, but do you have other yeah. consumer um, debt? I don't have a home loan yet. Okay. <laughs> and I don't okay. have any credit card debt as well. I, okay, good. Okay. I do okay. have a no weighted lease though, which gets deducted from my salary. Yep. That's okay. the situation I'm in. Yeah, that's it all right. Might change no, in the future, but uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, that's okay. And and you can only make, and that's what's tricky and sometimes overwhelming about financial lives too, is that you're trying to make so many different decisions for now, for yeah. later. For, but what we've got to do that's is right. just with the information we have yeah. right now, with a reasonable look to the future, what that's is right. what is the best, um, sure. you know best use of, of this of, of this course. money that yeah. you have yeah yeah and is it that you've got that 12,000 already or would it be cash flowed so uh, you're thinking no, that, no. I, I can I can have that cash that's not a problem but I'll, yep. I'm just weighing it up should I have just, that cash with me for use mm -hmm. in other yep. things that I want like uh, that is a decision I'll make uh, yeah or, yep. sh or should I pay that Eighteen thousand dollars, or yes. a period of ten, or whatever, or whatever it comes to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. And and because eighteen and, is not what I'm paying today. Eighteen is what I'll be paying no. over ten years, yeah. versus yeah. twelve, which will be right now up front. So that is a decision yeah. decision I can make if I can get that those rough yeah. Yeah. calculation those figures. Calculations. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, no worries. And 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 is and is a home like are you are you wanting to build up a deposit for to purchase a home in the next five uh, years? No, um, already in, in a house, so okay, I cool. don't have to pay anything and it's all paid off. 
So oh, you paid it. off your home. Okay, cool. So yeah. that that's great. Okay, that, and that's another additional piece there too, because that's if right. you are wanting to build up a capital amount to help you enable you to do something else, but you don't yeah. have that as well. Um, yeah, I can do that simple yeah. calculation just so you've sure. got that information. But but remember that it's it's isolated. I'm not looking at everything else. Of course. But, and of it's course. not financial advice, but I can show you modelling-wise yeah, what the figures are. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no worries at yeah. all. So, yeah, I can and What do you need you. from me in the email? Uh, just um, my course and what my fees um, will be in. Uh, well, just so if you want to just, we can keep it at high level, 12,000. Yeah. I'm happy with that. No, it's more that yeah. Alison will forward it to... Uh, your request it just needs to go through her and then she'll okay. send it to me and I'll have yeah. your email address and then I'll just respond to you directly. Awesome. Yeah. No lovely. worries. Yeah. Great. Thank cool. you. Lovely. I'm glad this was helpful today. It um, was. Yeah. Great. And I'm sure your questions, as I say, they're usually hugely valuable to other students listening back. So thank you for coming as well. Can I ask one stupid question? <laughs> Anything. Yeah, sure. What yeah. is the difference between hex or inhale? <laughs> There is it. So it's just the one. My understanding is that it's just the one term. So it, it was kind of a, it, it, it's a hex help. Sometimes it's said together. It's hex, and sometimes it's hex help. Um, and it's almost, I think, something that's happened over time. Alison might be able to speak to this as well. But it's it's kind of had varying names over time that have come together. So they're the same thing. They are the same thing. thing. Yeah, in short, help. it's a loan. <laughs> in, 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 it's a student loan. That's what I like That's to say. It. And and as I and as I now and I'm and teaching in another unit, I usually teach it under that larger umbrella umbrella of the STSL loans now. So they're just student yeah. loans. They can be through higher ed. They can be through the vocational education. They're, they're just student loans. Yeah. And cool. you can go into the, so hex, yeah, so it just becomes confusing, I know, for people, like, just to make sure we're talking the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 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 no, it's not a silly question. Yeah, very all good. good. Lovely, thank, thank you. you, lovely. Um, So I think that's, and that's really all the um, material I wanted um, to cover today. And just at the end, like to just remind students as well that if they do need help, they want to talk about something one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, even just that having, I, I guess my, I found the most value that I've been providing students is really to be that soundboard where they're talking through something they're working on, a financial decision they're making. I've got quite a few student clients who are building up small businesses um, so I can help talk through and highlight perhaps areas that they might not have thought about, things they might want to investigate. Um, so that's been really um, great uh, working with students. Students. So what the SCPA have done is partnered with me, and this is a free service for all of the postgrad students. They just get in contact um, with Alison um, or through the help desk, and they get you in touch with me, and we organise a one-on-one -on -one Zoom uh, free uh, confidential um, session, um, and you can have a number of sessions depending on what it is that you're working through. So, yes, yeah, certainly can help with um, a varying number of things. So if it's, yeah, really that soundboarding, if it's a particular financial decision, building up businesses, um, even if it's just, uh, you know, budgeting and getting a sort of a more practical plan together around your finances. Uh, yeah, really happy to help support you with those things as well. So we're just the, the key thing that we, we, we're noting is that when, we, when the, the, the surveys are done, the number one thing that's causing student stress is financial um, you know, well-being and financial topics and literacy. So that's really what we've been trying to do is, is help alleviate some of that stress through these webinars by providing you with information, but also having the one-on-one -on -one sessions here, being somebody that can help you talk through some of those things. And I can also direct you to other people if there's particular things or specialised services that you need, if it's in the mental health space or if it's financial advice, whatever it might be, we can sort of talk through those things as well. So, yeah. So thank you again, um, Zishan and, and Alison as well for organising this. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, wonderful. And um, good. yeah, thank you. Okay, well, we'll finish up there. Thanks for your time, Liz. Very informative. Lovely. Thank you.